it's advertised as a gaming chair, but it's got like a really good pedigree to, to last a couple of years, which is what I'm hoping. And of course, people are gonna ask, well, what did you do to break the chair? I just sat in it. <laughs> you just sat in it. It's not like I went to a WWE ring and started smacking people <laughs> with it. I just, like, you might make the argument that I, I, I may sit down a little too, like, when I come to sit down, I come down a little hard. But I've been especially careful with that chair. And it still broke. I was almost about ready to go out to like a, a lumber yard or something like that and just prop it with like a little thing of wood. Uh, but then it broke way too far for that to even be a possibility. I literally assembled this chair last night before we recorded. <laughs> and this one might actually be really cool because it's got some cushions and some, some stuff to help out when I have to stream. Basically, this is, this is a similar chair to like what Angry Joe has. So, people can look forward to that on newer videos. I'm just having to get used to it because I can't recline in it like I could on office. Wow, this has been an interesting conversation. We're talking about office chairs. We're talking about friggin' chairs. <laughs> we are! Dude, Supreme defense! When you're, when 80% you, of your job is sitting in an office chair all day long, I mean, you know this from working in a call center. Mm -hmm. For crying out loud. Uh-oh. And he's evolving again. It's not working. What is going on? Can we do it? We have to. We can't give up here. Mm. Let's go. All right. So right now, he's completely invulnerable. And too bad we don't have a data drain. I'm sorry, the Armageddon spell. We don't have an Armageddon spell. Well, like I was saying, like, you know this from a car, from a call center perspective. When you're sitting, when your job is to sit mm -hmm. for eight hours or however many, like for me, it's like 12 easily in a day because I've got to edit and I've got to record all that that starts to wear on you yeah so yeah office chair is a big thing people I don't have a standing desk I wish I had a standing desk I'd probably use it a lot it's one of those things where I wish that I would have gotten into the uh, there was one call center that actually had converting desks it could be a sitting or a standing oh yeah those would be so nice absolutely I wish I could do that with my desk, but I can't do that. So, and it's one of those things where I don't have the money to yeah, I bet go get are, one of those. Because they're, they're literally easily $1,000. Yeah, I had to assume they're probably pretty expensive. Oh, yeah. Me and my brother looked into it because we both wanted one. Because, I mean, where I do editing at home and he does programming at home. Um, we both easily wanted that. Like, if we wanted to raid while standing up, we could do that. Like, easily $1,000 to get one. Which makes me wonder how those call center companies actually afforded that. You know, a thousand, a thousand per desk. And there's like desk, there's rows of ten. I'm sure they would get a discount on that. Probably because they bought in bulk. Mm -hmm. Okay, did, so did we beat the invulnerability? It's impossible. No, we'll lose if we give up. Well, we're doomed. Ball monk's giving up. Is it time to quote Bender? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Your black rose, right? <coughs> His lips were still moving. Yeah. Small <laughs> monk of the Azure Sky. Or I see. Azure Seed. I do not want to lose to you. Who's Seed? Go! You don't remember? He was Mai's girl. Mai's. Mai's boyfriend in Liminality. Oh, okay. Point. Is that supposed to be the original. Yeah, that's the original Trump. Sora. The original Sora? Okay. <laughs> By the power of friendship! Now we move into and now you're boned phase three. 
Oh, and he's got cherry blossoms coming off of him. <laughs> because of course he does. Because <laughs> Japanese game. Because <laughs> Japanese game. Because JRPG. I thoroughly convinced we're not playing Dot Hack anymore. We're playing Okami. All right, so Corbinic three. Uh, apparently, he wants to play ball. Are those ads we actually have to take care of? Yeah. Okay, well, let's take care of them. Now, here's the other thing that I also wanted to bring up on the chat, because people have been asking on Dragon Shadow, I haven't talked about it enough, was my thoughts on Legion thus far. I'm still enjoying it. Um, I hit 110. I actually just barely, yesterday, got my item level up to be Ow. on raid tonight, uh, as of our recording today. But what's going to make this even better to Alex is I officially can never leave the world of Warcraft <laughs> because the only thing you can't do is log out. Um, Literally, because uh, the Legion Companion app also launched over the weekend, <laughs> which is basically a management resource for me to be able to take care of my order hall when I'm not at my computer. So basically, uh, World of Warcraft just became the Hotel California. You could check in, but you can never leave. Even better is like, so this actually has a dozen other features. In fact, I, I think this is going to be an ongoing joke for a while. Is uh, Drac, could you pay attention while while we're, we're playing this game? I'm sorry, man. I got to get my garrison missions out because that's going to be a thing that happens. Or even better, uh, so now it also gives me my world quest so that I can actually sit there and go, okay, I, I want to get that one and I want to get that one. Alex is building and building up for the rage right now. <laughs> Both at Corbin Egg as well as Drac. Because Drac can literally, literally never leave the world of Warcraft. Can't ever do it. That's okay though, because uh, Shadow Blazer is not going to have to deal with uh, the hatred that's going to be coming to my channel in the next little bit. Which, this is going to come out a couple of weeks later, so we can't talk about it. So last week I did a Drac Tries on Recor, which is the other game that came out from KG and Afune this year, which I liked it. And I've been able to play a little bit more since then. I still like it. I, I think it's got a really great open world Mega Man kind of style. That's not gonna be the point of Vivid Purification. That's not gonna be the point of uh, contention because also by now my review of Mighty Number no. 9 has come out. And contrary to what the internet tells me, I don't hate it. You don't like it either. I actually do like it. I think I like it. Mm -hmm. I think it's actually a, a legitimate good attempt to be able to, to get a reimagined Mega Man out there. So by now, this has already happened. I'm actually going to be doing two separate reviews. One without all of the controversy that happened behind Mighty Number no. 9. All the Kickstarter stuff all the concept stuff, I'm taking that all out and judging the game as a game. Like, as an indie attempt to reimagine Mega Man. Or a Mega Man type game. I may even compare it to Mega Man. I don't know. You guys can watch the video. The second one is bringing in all the controversy. So, bringing in, like, was it worth waiting three to four years? Should we have paid $4 million for this product? Mm -hmm. Which is what we did. We paid $4 million for Mighty Number no. 9. For concept to squander. Data tray. Well, that's not fair. He gets the Hideo Kojima powers and we don't. Yeah. What the heck? That's OP, dude. That that needs rebalancing. Um. So at that point, no, I don't hate it. I think it's actually a solid attempt. I think it's, uh, it's difficulty is really wonky. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, you've seen it in Mega Man, like, where I, I'll do really, really, really well, and I'll get some extra lives and some E-Tanks that I don't even use until the final battle, right? Right. Well, in order to add difficulty to this, they basically said, okay, whatever lives and whatever E-Tanks you have in that level, stay in the level. So, if you beat the level and you have, like, eight lives, 
you go right back down two pipes. Wow. In the next level. So you basically have no lasting progression for your character because of that. And I actually hate that. Who, who, who turned the filter to opposite? You have a dinosaur in your eye. I don't know if you realize that, Corbinic, but you do. You have a, di a dinosaur in your eye. Is it a velociraptor? Is it a clever girl? No! Oh no! And now we have clouds. Who knows? But one thing's for certain. My server is dead. It doesn't matter. Now is the time. Do it I'm sorry, it does matter. I paid money for that. <laughs> She's a hacker. She doesn't. Pay or in some cases, yeah, she didn't pay. She didn't pay Jack for it. So yeah, um, I'm probably gonna have a very controversial video at this point. Who knows? I'll probably be stressed out, but it hasn't come out yet. And uh, you guys can check out the videos because they're probably up by now. But yeah, I did actually end up liking it. I thought it was a unique take on on Mega Man, and that's why I'm saying the internet will hate me because the internet is out for blood when it comes to Mighty Number no. Nine. That's true. This is going to be one of those times where, again, me and the internet are going to disagree. Because I do think it's actually a solid attempt. Do I think it should have been made with $4 million? Nope. But I'm actually going to say this like I do in the other video. I don't fault concept entirely for that. I think part of the blame actually resides in us. Or I didn't back it. Um, I thought I backed it, but I, I didn't. I double checked to see if my money went in the, into it. This makes sense now why I didn't get demos and stuff like that, because I never actually backed it. I backed on a project. But the reason I bring that up is because a bunch of people backed this thing and gave it $4 million. And I think it's, I can't remember its original goal off the top of my head. But I'm becoming more and more of a proponent that. Once that thing gets funded, the only money you put towards it is to buy it. And at that point, I would actually recommend that like, if you get an avenue to be able to do that through Steam or something like that, do that instead of the Kickstarter. Oh, that, that sounds like endorsing Steam Greenlight. There yeah, I but I don't, want, I don't want to give them huge, enormous Kickstarter budgets that they'll squander. Which, in, unfortunately, we've now had a couple of solid examples where legit developers have done that. Mm -hmm. You know, you could say that uh, Keiji Inafune has done that with, with Concept and Mighty Number no. 9. You could say that Tim Schafer's done it with Broken Age. And I, I would say that there are some shining examples of people that didn't, like Yacht Club didn't. Um, which I completely appreciate them for. Uh, Stardew Valley was a Kickstarter-backed project, and it's awesome. But it's one of those things where I'm not saying that I'm not saying the people are bad, but like, do we really want to give pe give developers four million when they're asking for like a hundred thousand anymore? I don't think I want to, because at some point people get I think they get that huge amount and they get a little exorbitant with it on what they want to do, and that bogs things up. I'm so close. Now he has to do this. Of course he does. Because screw you. <laughs> oh, stop these things again. Skills Can you not attack him while they're out? No, I can't. It's just he's so close. And I don't want to have to waste time fighting us. I think I got him. Yay, black hole. And you're being attacked while, while you got him. You're dead too. Game over. Try again. <laughs> wow, Alex. One time. You were worried, too. I know. We did it. I have something in my eye. Because <laughs> I remember the first time I played this, it took me several tries. And there goes the Hideo Kojima powers. It's... Drain 
How does he know what kind of attack it is if he's never had this? We have had it. Oh, you've had Drain Heart? Okay. Yeah. You just never used it. Well, because it spreads the infection rate right faster, so I ah. only used it when I absolutely needed to. Oh no! It's evil arrows! And boom! Ah! Damn! She's not gonna be rush hour three. Nope, she's not. She's not gonna call us fat anymore either. <laughs> uh, she'll be okay, everybody. Black Rose will live to see another day. Really? Oh, you took the bullet for us. I'm gonna be the hero in this, you motherfucker. You took Mia from me. Yes, yes, Elk, you were. I'm not accepting your apology. You were. Oh my gosh, is he actually going to become part of the world now? No, they'll all be fine. Okay. They're not all going to die or become He's part like, of the world. He's like, he forever gets to spend time with Mia. It's the arrows of doom! I won't. Prodigious! <laughs> Damn it! I'm sorry, it's the voice of Izzy. I, can't I know, I get it. <laughs> as long as you don't bring up his crush with Izzy, I'm fine. You mean his crush with or, me? Or Garuru Dup Dirt Dirtface, I'm fine. Gadupramon. <laughs> Just stab him already. It's gotta be traumatic, Adam. This has gone beyond traumatic. Uh, oh no! This is what happens uh, when you get overly dramatic. Mother. But I'm supposed to be Shion Uzuki in the next game. Gee, now I know why Seno Saga didn't last that long. <laughs> Shion Uzuki died. Or did Aura die and become Shion Uzuki? You don't want to follow that train of thought because <laughs> once episode 3 comes along, she becomes very TNA. Oh. So watch what you say. You were supposed to fill my dark soul with light! <laughs> and nobody gets it yet. Yet. Ah, oh, crap, my baby's crying. <laughs> I didn't even she think she was here. In a sense, the world has been reborn, so Adam, I want you to please insert symbolism. Symbolism! It said insert it, not do it yourself. That sounds like Character work. design. Yoshiyuki Sadamoto. Alright, so... It's the end credits. This is the saga. I don't even know what we call this, because the other one... Like, there are other ones that are called, like, roots. But this one has really no... subheading for it. Yeah, we... Well, we... Technically, roots is its own thing, but we'll get into that. Yeah. We call... People will call it the quadri the first quadrilogy. Mona Marshall, Wendy Lee, Kirk Thornton, Crispin Freeman, so McLean. this is this is kind of a hallmark moment for us. The, we started the channel doing Infection, mm -hmm. or no, we started with Fantasy Star, Fantasy Star, and then we did Infection. Yeah, and we just barely have finished Fantasy Star. Well, the the JRPG versions, <laughs> and then we finished this. I mean, how are you feeling, Alex? We we, we've actually, like, accomplished kind of Data big milestones. You did it. Oh, it's amazing. We've come so far. I heard... And final th final thoughts, Alex, on words. the quadrilogy. I still love these games. Except even though she... the gameplay hasn't held up too well sometimes. She but... was born. No, the gameplay is very dated. And Morgana. But I still love these games. But I just hate born. the virus core farming. To be born, they may have had 
to die first. You are in the wrong line of games, my friend. Farming is what Apoptosis. you do in RPGs. It is one of the patterns of life and death. There's Kazu. The world's always being changed by everyone's hearts. That's Black Rose's little brother. Oh, I got kicked by my baby. <laughs> Again, I just Wait, a little girl's pregnant? No, no, people. I still just find it really funny, because pretty much as we were getting ready to do Outbreak, which is where we get the reveal that Mistral's pregnant, you know, your wife got pregnant too. Yes. Yes, that, that around that time was when it happened. Um, <coughs> is it finally over now? Is it- Shut up, Leo! So try to get into my thoughts here! <laughs> Care about what Leos looks like. We really don't. Hi, Steve Bloom. <laughs> it's just Steve Bloom would now be a really awkward time to ask for an autograph. <laughs> I'm kind of in the middle of a game here. Kind of in the middle of a performance. Can you come back later? I, I, I know, but um, we're not going to see you after this, I don't think. Oh, yeah, we'll see you in like Rise of the Tomb Raider and a bunch of other things. <laughs> All right, so I guess let's go into, uh, I'll go into my final thoughts Josh on quarantine. infection, mutation, outbreak, and quarantine now that I've seen the entire story all the way through. Japan recording. Um, I will agree with you. This game is very dated. It's It it looks like it was made in the PS2 era. Um, it's almost like it was made in the PS2. It's almost like it was, yeah. <laughs> but do it like, if this thing got remade, then it, I'm sure it would, it would look a lot more polished, but it's, it's very clear that it is. Uh, as far as story is concerned... While vague and uh, cryptic, it still is an interesting one to go through. Let's play Bull the Third. I will say this, though. If I was playing, I would have lost patience a long time ago. Uh, so it, it's actually been really advantageous, advantageous to have Alex as the dot hack fan mm -hmm. to play through this while I just sit back and enjoy. And yes, I made fun of it the entire time. Guys, I make fun of every RPG that I ever play, every game that I ever play. He does. So at that point, you can tell that I'm having a good time when I'm doing that. If I'm sitting here quiet, like I had on a couple of pretty big suckitude games this year, that's how you know I'm not having a good time perfect example no man's sky i was so quiet because i was so freaking bored uh from that game but anyway back into it i appreciate this game um it's one of those things where i'm glad somebody else would have played it because i would have given up uh so i got to see it from start to finish and as far as the milestone is concerned it, it kind of just brings a tear to my eye holy crap guys we've almost finished up the sonic games that we wanted to cover mm -hmm. we've we're, we're getting to fantasy or we're finishing up the first four fantasy star games. We just finished this up. It's like, well, now where do we go from here? Like, do like this, I guess at this point, this would have been a great like ending point for the channel. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to announce it right now. The, mm -hmm. the channel's ending. It's over. Yeah. We, <laughs> we, we fulfilled our, our quotas. That's a she. Okay. No, I, I'm, I'm kidding. I see. So, um, Obviously, we have some bonus content well, that, that we're going to get into for quarantine. Yeah. Might I just add that song? I've never heard that song in, in the game at all. Yasushi, okay, so I don't know why it's credited. Hi, Gynax. <laughs> yeah, there you train. go. Bandai Visual. So I'm I'm glad I actually experienced this, and I, I think it's a good game. Um, is it, like, the greatest RPG that I've ever seen? Probably not. There, there are a couple of others that, that would be up there, but I, I would say this is, like, right in the middle somewhere. Uh, as a whole, not like not like per per game or, or anything like that. I would say as a whole because it's all an overarching plot. Produced by Bandai. With that being said, um, so obviously we have some bonus content to go through here, but then we get to move. Do, do we announce the next thing that we're going into, or do we wait? Let's, the, the, let's announce it. We always announce it. Um, so after the bonus content, the next game that we're going to be taking on. By Alex's request is Fantasy Star Online. Woo! And I'm going to add a little bit of a, a caveat into that as well. Alex has been making a very strong pitch that we play it multiplayer. A few months later, Orca and I started on our journey again. Well, thanks, Kite. Thanks for interrupting me. <laughs> Image 77 has been added to the desktop. 
Okay. 78. 79. 80. 81. 82. 83. 84. 85. 